I don't normally talk about cases and stuff, but every now and then I like to talk about something if it's different enough or more of a departure from a company's particular norm, and if it's maybe got some sort of case mod type of potential. Because you guys know over the last couple of years I've been doing more case mod type stuff, and I haven't done one yet this year, and I'm kind of itching to do that. So today we're going to go ahead and kind of talk about a new case and some of the ideas I have for it soon-ish, as if I need to build more computers. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should have a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Fractal Design, a company that when I hear the brand, immediately boring comes to mind. Fractal Design thinks that there's one shape, and there's only been one shape ever in the history of shapes, and that is rectangle. The Define R4 was very popular. I built quite a few of those actually at the start of this YouTube channel. Subsequently, the R5 came out, which was the same. The Define R6 came out, which was mostly the same. Then we had the Define S, we made the Define S2, different, but the same. Then we had the Vector RS, which was another attempt to pull the wool over your eyes to make you think it was actually a new case when it's just a little bit different front panel with some lights and stuff in it. You know, adding, adding lights in the trim doesn't really make it a new case. Still a rectangle, still the same. But then we had the Era, which was small and it was different and it was designed with the help of Intel and it was a complete departure of everything that Fractal Design had ever made. It also sucked. It would overheat your parts and the airflow was terrible. That one was delayed. It should have been delayed further, as in into an early grave. Now we got something new here. We are obviously talking about the Torrent. And at first glance, you can see that this is clearly a big departure from Fractal Design's norm. Look, we live in an era of... Era. We live in an era where mesh and high flow reign supreme. Airflow, right? The last thing you want is a Gamers Nexus video talking about how terrible your airflow is in your case with normalized volume and a big chart with 65,000 different cases to compare it to. But I'm gonna tell you right now, on first glance, it's obvious that airflow is the, uh, is it torrential airflow? I don't know if that's really a word, but anyway. You can see obviously it's got a big giant opening in the front. And if we take a look at the back real quick before we start opening it up, they're like, we heard you like ventilation. But I wanna talk about some initial design stuff with this though that does make me kind of disappointed at the start. The overall shape with these sort of angular top with these sort of rounded with a very squared edge. This looks like they just called up Cool Master and said, can we borrow your chassis? And then threw their own flare on it. It really does remind me of a Cooler Master case. But, you know, this is, this, is, this is my subjective opinion and I'm telling you the way that it looks at first glance. But some of the things that make this obviously different is the fact that we have sort of gone back, at least with the Torrent, a top mounted PSU. Typically power supplies are at the bottom, and one of the reasons why brands did that was just for balance. You know, a lot of towers, you put a big heavy power supply in the top, could actually make it tippy. Anyone, why is this so squeaky? Whoa. <laughs> what? We'll be back while I tighten up this table. But if you've ever had an old beige box with the power supply up top, then you would know it could actually be pretty tippy. However, with the amount of stuff that you could put on the bottom of this, in terms of radiators and water and all that sort of stuff, you could obviously balance that. So let's go ahead and open it up. Let's start by getting my screwdriver apparently because, nope, there we go. Thumb screws that are actually thumb tight. There's a first. So the top panel here is not designed for fans. As you can see, it's obviously designed for the power supply, airflow to the power supply if you wanna bring air in from the chassis itself, which is highly recommended because as you can see, there's no perforation in the top panel, so having the fan facing up to pull air down is a terrible idea. So it's gonna be considered an exhaust fan for your system. So if you wanna talk about balancing airflow, obviously you can fit a 140 or a 120 on the back right here. And that's technically the only exhaust. Everything else in this chassis is designed to be full positive pressure, which isn't a bad thing, but I like to have the assistance of air in plus air out if you have something helping ex exhaust the air, that also helps pull in the air because of balanced airflow. When air is moving, it's gotta be resupplied some way. It can't just move itself into a pure vacuum. That doesn't work when it comes to cases. So 
Uh, positive pressure, not a bad thing, but you can have one 140 or 120 millimeter fan on the back to help exhaust that air, plus whatever air that your power supply is gonna be exhausting out the back right here. You got three different size holes here for, I'm assuming fill ports. Let me see if my port fits in there. Look at that. I don't know why you need two or three of them, but the options are there. So you could have a nice cleanly hidden fill port if you need to top off your open loop, take the panel off and just put a funnel in there and, or a threaded funnel fill up your loop and then there you go. Cable management for your power supply cables. You can see that right here, you have a gap that would allow you to bring cables down through grommets and stuff right here, down through the side right there, into the rear chamber. I'm going to start by taking the back glass off. One thing worth noting is that there are various versions of this case. This is clearly not an RGB version. They do have an RGB where all the fans are already RGB on there. Um, these are just the basic black fans, but this is the light gray edition. So they have black, white, and then this one here, which is light gray. But as you can see by looking at the back, your cable management is designed to come right across here and then through these grommets and stuff. Three and a half inch drive base sleds right here, which these don't look like they double as a two and a half inch drive sled because there's no holes right here, which is interesting. You could double sided tape to it if you want, or just take it off and double side tape to the wall it's mounted to. So that's kind of odd. Giant grommets right here though, which give plenty of room if you're passing through you know, three PCI Express cables for modern graphics cards, which use a ton of power. One thing to keep in mind though, with the power supply all the way at the top, it's gonna be a long run for your PCI Express cables to come all the way down to the bottom and then loop back to your graphics card. So unless you're doing custom cables, chances are it'll have to come in through the top to fit. Otherwise, they may not be long enough to reach all the way around. That's unfortunate, but that's just sort of what happens when you move the power supply. You know, typically it's the EPS eight pin power. It makes a weird direct run that's not super clean because it's got the longest run to go from the bottom of the case all the way up to the power at the top of the motherboard. Now you've just sort of done that in reverse to the PCI Express for your graphics cards because those are now the longest runs. But you can see right here, we do have a fan hub built into the case and Fractal's been adding more fan hubs now to their cases, which is nice because cable management usually looks really nice until you get to like the fans and then they start looking all ugly. But You've got one, two, three, four, five, six fans right here. And then we've got an additional one, two, three right there. So we have what, nine fans we can control with this particular hub. They are powered through SATA. So that way you're gonna obviously have plenty of power running to these fans. That way they're not trying to draw motherboard power through that many fans, that'd be terrible. And then it does have a PWM plug that can hook into your CPU header or any header you want to control this fan hub. The only downside from that is all the fans are gonna speed up and slow down in unison, which is good because balanced airflow, or in this case of nearly being nearly all positive pressure, it doesn't really matter. But theoretically, you could take that header and you could plug that into a graphics card that has a fan header on it, just giving the PWM signal to this controller, which means when your graphics card goes under load, which is the single hottest component in your system generating heat inside the box, having that send the signal to the controller saying speed up the fans would actually give your GPU the best performance benefit because the fans are responding to it and not the CPU, which doesn't get nearly as hot during gaming. So these are fun uh, to have in any sort of case. These are your drive sleds right here for your two and a half. So you got one, two, three, four of them. What I like about this metal, and we're talking about the case, some of the case mod stuff in a second here, is the fact that it's got this kind of a, I don't know, cargo-y looking, looks like a cargo, container of some sort, like these, these unnecessary but cool looking designs in there. These are things that can, that all start getting my brain juices bouncing around inside my brain bucket where I go, what could I do with this? And like, how could I tie that into some sort of a mod theme? Well, we'll talk about that in a sec because I do have some plans for this. But obviously we have to get to the inside because this is where things really start to get exciting. Look. At the open interior, we've got three 140 millimeter fans at the bottom. So right off the bat, that tells you, you could fit a 120, a 140, a 240, a 280, a 360, or a 420 radiator in the bottom. That is a lot of radiator space. Now the nice thing about the radiator being in the bottom, that makes it easier to fill versus it being vertical and then having the ports at the top or the ports at the bottom because air likes to sit at the top of the rad and then you have to wait for it to fill. With it being at the bottom actually makes it a lot easier for it to fill. The front comes pre-installed, as you can see right there, with two 180 millimeter fans. Now that's kind of an interesting, it's kind of interesting to decide to go with two 180 millimeter fans 
versus three 140s to balance out the bottoms. You have three 140s in the bottom and three 140s in the front. Equal airflow in, equal airflow out, and then you wouldn't even need an exhaust technically. Or in this case, three in, three in, six intakes, giving you nothing but massive positive pressure. I looked at this and I went, so how do we mount different fans on the front? Because the components that we have on the bottom, and by the way, I want you guys to see just how easy this front panel comes off because this is where you get to your filter so that you can, uh, come on. It's easy, I swear. The manual said it's stupid easy. See, super easy. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you again. This whole front piece right here, if you just sort of take your thumb, you can just kind of set it there. You can be like, push that off. And then you can get to your filter, which is right here and just, ah, thumb. Oh, okay, that was like weird leverage. Moving on, there's your fan filter. It matches the shape of the front grill. That way you just see the filter material. You don't actually see any of that. There's that. And hey, the logo, it's actually metal. It's not just plastic, it's actually metal. So there's our two 180 millimeter fans on the front. The 180s have a few benefits. One, a lot of volume. I mean, look at this. This is like some sort of spy movie and you're, you're kind of rooting around inside of a duck system and you gotta look out for the big fan that's going <laughs> Slower, bigger blades move big volume of air without big noise. So I can see that being one of the benefits to going with the 180s. Look, it also nearly fills the front end because it goes all the way across the sides. However, they do come with these brackets right here because just like the bottom, you can fit 120 and 140 millimeter fans. It's just to do so, you have to mount them to these brackets and then these brackets will mount in there so that you're able to, uh, sure which way they go, but they go in here some way. Yeah, like, like that, I think. So that way you're able to, wait, there we go. They go like that. So that way you're able to mount your fans in there and have your 120s and your 140s. Cause you could go with, depending on the thickness of your radiator, two 360s in this or two 420s. 420 in the front, 420 in the bottom, giving you more radiators than I even have in Skunk Works at the moment in terms of more overall radiator space. And remember the more volume you get, the more cooling you can get for your components without having to run the fans at high speed, making it extremely silent. Now, if you take a look at the motherboard tray, this can fit up to EATX, ATX, micro ATX, and mini ITX. I mean, it would look kind of silly with a mini ITX in here, but hey, you could do it. But now you can see with everything out of there, all the grommets you have for your pass through. So you can fit an ultra, like a, a, a full size, true EATX motherboard, which is something that previous cases in the past from Fractal didn't typically support because they had this kind of a offset motherboard tray which would recess back a little bit which give you this little ramp next to it and the motherboard would hit that or you do like i did which you just bend it real hard so it clears in one of my builds just to show you the standard what we're calling standard eatx these days so obviously you need to be mindful of how wide the motherboard is because we are covering half the grommet but we still have room to actually run cables through there one thing to keep in mind though is take a look at the placement right here where my fat finger is touching this USB 3.0, it's not gonna be able to come through this grommet cleanly and plug into that 3.0 because it's gonna be hit by the, the top of the grommet right there. See how it's offset. The bottom one, yes. The SATA's down here, yes. This uh, U.2 right here on the bottom doesn't line up very well. So, and there's no other holes over here to pass through. So these are just the kind of things you need to keep in mind. Sure, you do have a hole down here on the bottom which the fans would go through, but then you'd be making kind of a crazy like loop type plug. These are just some of the things you need to think about when it comes to plugging up your motherboard and having everything sort of line up. This grommet up here on the top, partly covering it as well, but we can access both of our eight pin EPS CPU power right here through that top grommet. The nice thing is this might be the first build or case that I have used where I don't have to worry about what order do I put things in at the top of the case. Cause if I was to hang a radiator there, an AIO or a custom loop or whatever, and they hang down in front of those pins or the, the plugs, it makes it impossible to get them plugged in. So it's like, okay, make sure I plug those in and let the cables hang down the backside if it's a modular PS, PSU, then plug in or hook up the radiator and stuff. That way I'm not blocking those plugs, but I, it wouldn't matter because there's nothing going up here. It's just super clean. So anyway, that's how a motherboard looks in there and you can see that that actually looks really good in there. Too bad it's a Z390 and it's old. Nobody loves you anymore. But you can see now that this is pretty well thought out. Giant opening back here. That way, if you install your motherboard, 
and you need to get to the back plate or the bracket for your air cooler or your water cooler or something for maintenance, you don't have to take the motherboard out to get that off. Um, standoffs are pre-installed. And uh, on the bottom here, you do also have a front removable filter. That's the full length of the bottom of the case. So you can have this sitting in a cubby or some sort of a cabinet or on top of your desk and not have to slide it away to get to all the, because some of the filters like to come out sideways on the cases, but if you have a monitor or something right here next to it, you have a tight space, then getting that out could be kind of a pain in the butt. So taking this out the front clearly gives you the most amount of room uh, of being able to be easily accessed for this front panel on that filter without having to take anything away from your desk. So now that you can see the chassis, this to me looks like, like some sort of a warp drive engine. Like it looks like the kind of thing you would see, which one's the bottom, there we go. It looks like the kind of thing that you would see in a spaceship. So I imagine this being black and kind of sooty. The outside maybe being a little bit lighter of a gray. This is a battleship gray for sure, but it's kind of dark. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter of a gray with some weathering on the edges, maybe some paint kind of scraped a little bit, some sort of like a military number sprayed on here. And then having teal or like light blue uh, fans in here. And then some sort of edge lighting around in here to make this all just really glow behind it with nice light blue to where it looks like. Like this would totally make sense if Phil were gonna theme himself like a Star Citizen PC. Like to me, this, this would be the build to use as a mod for a Star Citizen type of build. Um, I'm not sure what else there is to say about it. I mean, most of this seems pretty well thought out. The bracketry for your fans. You obviously get the typical accessory box that you get with all the fractal design stuff. Hey, there is something worth mentioning in here. They give you a GPU anti-sag bracket. So after I RTFM'd, uh, it actually goes down here. And then the height is adjustable like this. So it mounts close to the motherboard wall. Then you adjust this little nub so that it doesn't interfere with a fan or anything. But because it's at the end of the card, it gives it the most support. Um, and because it's closer to the motherboard tray, it's sort of stealth back there where you don't really see it. And something else that I want to point out is if you look carefully at it, you'll see this line right here is not a perfect 90. It's actually slightly acute from a 90, which means that because it's angled up, when the weight hits it, it'll bend to straight. The problem we've seen with some of these brackets that other cases have made is that they make a perfect 90, the weight hits it and then it sags still. But because it's slightly up from a 90, it means it'll sag to about level, which is kind of neat. The fact that even something that little was considered, but I'm glad because we've messed around with brackets before that just simply do not do any sort of justice regarding, it's like it didn't, it didn't stop the sag, it just sagged the bracket too. But anyway. Something I find kind of interesting though is none of these fans are actually pre-installed or hooked up to the fan controller. I think maybe they just saved themselves a few bucks on the manufacturing part of it by having somebody plug those in and route them because a human would have to do that. The fans that are included in this are the Dynamic X2 GP14. So these are the 140s, the GP12s are 120 millimeters. And then it's the same family of fan for the front. These are actually good fans. And the thing is, this might be the first case that you could actually use the fans that come with it and not feel like, one, you're not getting enough airflow because most case manufacturers will give you one, maybe two crappy fans that they know you're gonna throw away anyway, so why put good ones in there? But you have the full airflow effects of this case out of the box. Because obviously, if you're gonna build a case and you have airflow and all that sort of stuff in mind and you only put a fan there and like a fan here, that's just kind of like half-assing it. But you know, with how much this case costs, which is you know closer to uh, closer to two hundred dollars, it's like one hundred and eighty dollars. I think giving you five good fans is not an unreasonable ask. Obviously, with the RGB version of the case, uh, it's the more expensive version, which has RGB versions of these fans, which is not bad. We've used the fractal RGB fans before; they're pretty good. They give off a good amount of light. They use a standard. Uh, three pin or the four pin with one blocked off pin for the ARGB five volt headers that you can find on all modern motherboards are not proprietary in some way. It means that you're able to <clears throat> actually use the fans that come with it and not feel a need for tossing those out or tossing them in the box. Like we have boxes and boxes of stock case fans that are just garbage because we don't use them for anything because they're so terrible. All right, so with all that out of the way, um, looking at the bottom of this case too, one more final thought, it looks like we can actually fit 180 millimeter fans in the bottom as well. So we could fit two 180s on the bottom, two 180s in the front, 
and then you would just have big old fans, big old fans in there moving air. There's no vertical mount for this as far as I can tell because there's nowhere to mount it because of the fans being right here. There's no bracket or anything allowing you to turn these. These are all riveted in, so there is no vertical mount option with this particular case, which in my opinion is perfectly acceptable and fine. But one word of the warning though, one word of warning. If you're gonna be going with an AIO, don't put the ride at the bottom. We've talked about this a million times. <clears throat> There's this obviously discussions going on over and over and over where people are talking about, that's terrible radiator placement when it comes to your AIO. Yes, you want the outlets and the inlet tubes to be higher than the pump. And you can achieve that here on the front. It'll be harder because the, there's not a lot of room to bring the radiator up higher than the CPU, but the CPU is sitting right about here and the ports are up top and they come down, that's fine. The absolute worst thing you could do, yes, and if they're long enough, you could have the ports on the bottom, but that would be a long run in this case to have ports on the bottom. But the absolute positively worst thing you could possibly do in this case is put the radiator of an AIO at the bottom because then your pump is at the very top of the loop, which is gonna over time cause uh, through, through the evaporation that's gonna happen of the fluid through the tubing, that's never 100% sealed, allowing you not to have any sort of evaporation issues. You're gonna kill your pump prematurely because the air is gonna settle up there with the pump. The pump can't move air, it's percolating, it's moving bubbles. So as soon as you start to lose some fluid level, uh, it's gonna stop flowing. You can overheat your CPU, you can kill your pump entirely, which can then obviously lead to overheating and shutdown in your system. Don't put an AIO radiator in the bottom. So. There you go, guys. This is the Torrent from Fractal Design. A nice departure from their norm of just going, here's a rectangle box. Now we just have a rounded rectangle box. But when it comes to just airflow and stuff, I, I, I can tell you right now, there's really nothing on the owl market that is gonna match this in terms of just its sheer airflow. I just wish we actually had solid panels. Yes, I know that defeats the purpose of seeing inside but it also takes away some of the surface area I have to play with modding. Like if I had a solid panel here, I would rip this open and make it look like it exploded or something and then you would see inside, we have some sparking lights. I like damage, if you can't tell, I like doing damage type mods. If you guys want to see me do a case mod with this case, comment down below or hit me up on Twitter and let me know you wanna see it. If enough people tell me, yes, I want to see that, then we go, okay, it's worth our time. Check out the torrent with the link down below. Thanks for watching guys and as always, we'll see you in the next one.